today you're working on some special products, some special things that are multiplied together. So we're going to start with squaring a binomial. And just remember, if something is squared, it means you're multiplying it by itself. Um, in other words, what I've been saying in the previous video is we be nice and we write it out twice. Be nice and write it out twice. Okay, so when you do these questions, you are going to be nice. You're going to write this out twice. It's going to be equal to x plus 1 times x plus 1 when we have x plus 1 to the exponent of 2. So we're being nice. We're writing it out twice. And then we're going to follow our binomial distribution uh, like we did in the lesson before where the x multiplies the bracket x plus 1 and we get x squared plus x and then the plus 1 takes a turn and it multiplies the x plus 1 and we get a plus x and a plus 1. And then we collect like terms and we get x squared. There's only one x squared term. We have a plus x and plus another x. That's all together plus two x's. And then we have a plus one. So go ahead and try the next uh, five examples there. Put this on pause and then you can check your work. Okay, so you can check your answers with my answers and then we're going to discuss any patterns that you see. So if you haven't answered this question, do you know it, notice any patterns? Um, take a look, see what you can find, and then we'll talk about that. Okay, so if you've been looking for patterns, what I'm hoping you'll notice is that the very first term when we are writing these in descending powers um, of every one of these, that really comes from taking that two, uh, the first term in the binomial and multiplying it by itself, or taking the first term in the binomial and squaring that. So that is, uh, the 2x for example is being squared to get the 4x squared. Or if I look at the last example, if I take my 5x to the exponent of 2, so 5x to the exponent of 2, that is this particular answer of 25x squared. So I'm just going to write that below. That's 5x to the 2. This is my first term uh, for the second last example there. We've got 3x all to the exponent of 2. That's what's giving us 9x squared and so on. All right, I want to look at the very last term next. Um, I'm going to look at what we have on the ends of these. I have plus 1, a plus 16, a plus 9, a plus 1, a plus 16, and a plus 9 again. Now that comes from multiplying our two constant terms together. So in the first example, we got the plus 1 on the end by doing plus 1 times plus 1. We, for the second example, we get plus 4 times plus 4, and that's what's giving us the plus 16. We get a plus 3 and a plus 3 multiplying to give us plus 9. Um, a plus 1 and a plus 1 again to give plus 1. A plus 4 times a plus 4 gives us plus 16. And a plus 3 times a plus 3 gives us the plus 9. So really the last digit, the constant term, is the, the second term of our binomial actually squared. So we have a 4 squared. Um, this on the bottom, this is 1 squared. We have 4 squared. And then we have our 3 squared. So hopefully you're noticing those patterns. Now the question is, what about the middle? Well, what about the middle? I know that I got, in the first example, a plus x and a plus x by multiplying the x with the 1 and then the 1 with the x. Those go together, so those terms end up being the same, a plus x and a plus x. They go together to make two of those plus x's. Okay, so this is the trickier one uh, as we're going through the middle pieces. If I do my x times the plus 4 in the second example, that's giving me one group of 4x, but then I have the same multiplication of x times 4 to get a second pattern of plus 4x to get 8x's there. Similarly, x times 3 and 3 times x gives us our two things, which are the same, and they do, uh, go together to give us 6x's and so on. Let's just check the second last one here. A 3x times the 4 gives us the 12x, and then we're doing that again. 3x times a 4 to give us two groups of 12x to get 24x. And same with the last one. We're doing a 5x times a 3 uh, to get 15x, and then we're really doubling that to get the 30x. So if I look at this last example, I said that that was really double 
the 15x, which is really equal to, the 15x comes from the 5x times the positive 3. Okay, so my two terms in my binomial there, my 5x and my 3, we're really thinking of multiplying those together, taking the product of the two terms, and then we're doubling it. And that's true every single time here. If I look at the 24, that's twice the product of the 3x with the 4. The 4x is twice the product of the 2x and the 1. Okay, so general rule here, to get the um, binomial expansion of any binomial to the exponent of 2, you're really taking your first term and squaring it. So I'm going to take that a and square it. Okay, and then, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to grab the eraser tool because I don't want to mess this all up here. And then what we're doing is to get the middle term, we're taking double 2 times the a times the b the a times the b. And then to get the last term of our expansion, we're just taking the last term in our binomial, which is b, and squaring it. This thing is called a perfect square. Anything, any number, any term, any polynomial to the exponent of 2 is called a perfect square. Okay, so in this case we have a binomial not just a single term, but a binomial to the exponent of 2, and that is a perfect square. All right, so keep that in mind because with our multi-versions of quadratics, we know that we can have that vertex form, but we also looked at two other forms, one being standard form, and we know we can expand and simplify to get things into standard form like we did on the last example in the last uh, 4.5, what our goal is here, eventually, is to be able to start with something that's in its standard form, like this, and be able to write it in its factored form, because we know the factored form tells us things. It tells us our direction of opening, but it also tells us our x-intercepts or our zeros. And that can be really helpful when we're solving problems or trying to um, find what the zeros are for a, a function. All right. Uh, what happens if the sign in the middle is negative? I would like you to try expanding those uh, examples and then we will look at the patterns that we find there. You're going to find that it's very similar. Okay, hopefully you've looked for patterns as well as doing the expansion. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to put my final line on the last one here. I've got 25x squared minus 30x uh, plus 9. So if we follow what we talked about in the previous example, we know that that very first term each time, it still is coming from the multiplication of the very first term with itself. So this really is the very first term to the exponent of 2. The 9x would be my very first term, 3x to the exponent of 2, and this one is my 5x to the exponent of 2. So in terms of my general rule, the first term comes from the very first term to the exponent of 2. If we look at that last term, it is the same as before. Um, we get the plus 1 by multiplying our minus 1 with itself. So if you think of the b value um, being add negative 1, you were really taking that negative 1 and multiplying it by itself. This really is negative 4 multiplied by itself. This really is negative 3 multiplied by itself. So this is the plus uh, b squared on the end that we get. So they're always plus because whether it's negative or positive in the middle, a negative times negative is plus, or a positive times positive is plus. Now the middle part's a little bit different, but very, very similar. Um, if I take my x and times it by, whoops, my negative 1, that gives me my one group of negative x, and then we have a second group. So again, this is going to be 2 times the a times the b. Now, in terms of that, if you think of the b as being a plus negative, it is that, or just think the only difference this time is that it's a subtract, 2ab. Okay, so we're going to have subtract double the product of our two numbers there. Alright, so again, this is subtract a 2 times the 3x times the 4. Okay, and then this one is 2 times the, the 5x times the 3. 
with a subtract. Okay, you either put a plus and then think of negative 3 or you just make it subtract overall because overall the product will be a minus. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, go ahead, try the next part of the uh, handout and I will post another video to go through that part.